Hello and welcome to another Tableau training video. What I usually do is uh, single videos that solve just a particular issue. You know, that way the videos are quite short, as you can see from my Jellyman Education channel, right? So I've got a lot of videos in here, but I wanted a video that can kind of do everything at once, right? And just, it's not going to cover every single detail, but it's just going to be all the main things to kind of take you from zero to being able to create your basic graphics, your first dashboard, publish online. So all those kinds of elements and enough for you to get into it. Okay, so what I'm going to be covering in this video today is I'm not going to be showing how to install the software. If you do need that, I have a video down here called how do I get my free trial license? And that basically shows you how to get the, the software for the first time via the website. So go ahead and check that out first if you haven't installed it already. We are going to start from actually, you've already installed your software and now you wanna put your information in and start visualizing, right? So let's get out of here, All right? And pretend I have an Excel spreadsheet Okay, so let's say it's this spreadsheet right here. And you just want to make sure that your data is organized like a table. And what I mean by that is, I'll zoom in one more, is you have all your headings on the very first row. Okay, and then all your data is going downwards. Okay, that's it. And just make sure you haven't got anything at the bottom. Sometimes you will have like totals or something like that all along the bottom here. So just make sure you get rid of that can clean it up in Tableau, but again, we don't want to cover that. And uh, we just want to keep the data simple, right? So let's say it's in this format right here. I'm going to close this up. We're going to open up Tableau. All right. And there's kind of two, two ways to load your information up, right? So I'm just going to bring this to the left side. And the two ways are like this. Number one, all right, uh, getting started, you're probably going to be inserting rather basic kind of connections, things like Excel, text files that include CSVs, TXT files, Microsoft Access, uh, those kinds of files, right? Those are usually the basics. You can get a lot fancier. You'll be doing Tableau Server, Amazon Redshift, Oracle, I use a lot. Uh, Google Analytics, I just started using. SQL Server, you can. If you actually click this More button, there's a lot that you can connect to, right? So I'm sure you'll find it, and if not, head to the Tableau developers page and let them know, right? But I've pretty much always got what I needed here. So we're gonna connect to an Excel file. I'm gonna go ahead and click this. All right, it's gonna open a dialog box. I'm gonna to go to the downloads and find that file, right? I can click it like that. Or even easier, let's get out of here. You can actually just grab the file and just drop it in, right? Doesn't matter where you drop it in, it will create the connection, okay? So that's step one, connecting to our data set, okay? So let's bring it over here. Now, what you're gonna notice is a few things. Number one, ta uh, Tableau is gonna automatically set up your data. So it's gonna say, these are my tables, right? These are the, sorry, these are the columns that I had for my Excel spreadsheet, okay? It's organized them. It's also told Tableau what kind of data type it is. If you've never worked with data types, there's kind of several main ones. You know, dates, numbers, you'll hear strings, but strings just mean like a word, right? Uh, I think I already said date, like a uh, time. What's the other ones? If you click on this little symbol here, uh, you got Boolean, which is like yes, no, one, and zero. Those are kind of the main, main ones. Uh, Tableau does have geographical ones as well. I usually use like postcodes, state, cities. The good thing is it can usually pick this up automatically, okay? So that we're probably gonna leave as is because they seem right, okay? If you have a number like this, you do wanna set it to number if it's not already because when Tableau does a calculation like, you know, 701 times five, if this is a word or it's stored as a word, it doesn't really calculate, right? And we can do an example like that later. Now, in terms of setting up your connection, in an Excel spreadsheet, when you only have one sheet, it will automatically load that sheet for you, okay? Now, to give you an example, we'll close this again. I'm gonna open up that file, and I'm gonna call it like Jed Sheet so you can, so you can see it, okay? So let's call this Jed's Sheet, okay? Save this and close it. So now if I connect to that data again, 
All right, he's just asking me about an update and just some of my backed up files. Right, I'm gonna drop that again. Again, it doesn't matter where you drop it. Okay, it's gonna create the connection. Now, as you can see, when you have an Excel spreadsheet or a connection to an access database, whatever, it's gonna show all your sheets here or all your queries or all your table sets, whatever it might be. And you can just drop in what sheet you want. Okay, so if you have multiple sheets, it's gonna look like this. So you just grab that sheet, you drop it in here, and you're good to go, right? All the other stuff, don't worry about it, right? When you're getting started, you don't need to know about any of this kind of stuff because you're not gonna be dropping in like, you know, a million records on the first go. You're probably gonna do like maybe a thousand, few thousand, you know, so all this other stuff doesn't matter. Um, one thing I will show you is if you have a lot of columns, right? It will just keep going. So to have a better view of that, you can click this button right here, right? And that will just put it into this format, just so you can kind of scroll down and see, right? And that's pretty much it, uh, pretty much it, right? So now we've done the load up. We want to actually start building something. So we go sheet one, as you can see from the bottom here. Okay, go sheet one. And we're now at our user interface. And the user interface of Tableau is so, it's so nice. It's so refined. I really like it. Um, your columns are all in here. Okay, and it's separated by dimensions and measures. Now, dimensions and measures, they're kind of scary words, but all that really means is it usually puts all the numbers here and everything else in here. So this is kind of more like an other pile. This is like a number, so that if you're gonna do any calculations, you know they're all gonna be down here, okay? And what you'll also notice is, if you imagine like a line chart, right? You have a line chart. This is considered, if I do that, right? We just break it up, something like that, right? These are like columns, okay? And if you're going this way, those are like your rows. So when you're building in Excel, uh, building in Tableau, you basically drop what you want here and what you want here, and Tableau will build whatever it is you want to build. So let's do an example. Um, First of all, I'm not going to actually use this data set. This is kind of more of an example of what you can connect to. Um, what we're going to use is instead the Superstore data because everyone has access to that and the information is a lot more diverse that we can play with. All right, so you just open up Tableau. Let's close this up. And you'll see here at the bottom, right, sample workbooks. Everyone will have this, right? You'll see Superstore. So just go ahead and click that. And it's going to connect to this sample one. And this is great because if you ever wanted to see how you do certain things, there's lots of these kind of like demo ones that are already built. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all these, right? We don't need it at the moment. Delete, right click, delete. Yes, delete worksheets. Delete, delete worksheets, right? We're just going to clear all this garbage out. We're gonna start from scratch, start fresh with some really cool data. Now, when you get to the last one, Tableau doesn't actually let you have just zero sheets. So you gotta create a new one and delete that one, okay? So now we're at our kind of ground zero, if you will. Now I've got a lot more data to play with here. You'll notice that there's a lot of different data types. You got strings, dates, geographical locations. You got your Booleans, so like true or false, yes or no. Uh, this thing we'll get into later, that's a group function. And anytime you see this little itty bitty equals, it means that's a calculated field, right? But we'll get to that. Now, when I was talking about in that line chart, you pretty much just drop where you want things and Tableau will just plot it, right? So I'm gonna start with sales, right? So I've got my sales in, in terms of money and I'm just gonna double click that. And straight away, it's made it into a bar chart, right? And it's summed them all up. So it's it's aggregated it, if you will, right? It's collected it, it's summed it all together automatically because that's how Tableau works. It's, it's very intuitive. But this can belong to lots of different regions. This can belong to lots of different countries or categories. So you can actually split this up, right? So if I grab category over here and I drop it in columns, it's gonna split it in columns. Let's say I wanna see the next uh, grouping, which is subcategory. I can grab that and drop it in there. And again, it splits it. And it's and this is basically how Tableau works. It's just drag and drop for the most part. And then it will do everything for you. So it's really, really neat. Let's just clear this. 
right? Because let's do another simple example. If you go up here, you'll see this icon here. That just basically means clear the sheet. Okay, so let's do a different one. I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, segment. Again, I'm going to put it this time into rows, right? I can drop it that way. And let's grab profit this time, right? So I can grab profits and put it up here. And straight away, it's done a bar chart. I mean, it's, it's that simple, really. I've used other BI tools, and you, you are, like, jumping around a lot, trying to make things worth, work because, like, there's errors that come up, and it's just not a very fun experience, right? So let's go back. Let's get rid of that alert. All right, let's go back. So let's clear this. Now, the example I was going to do, which I've written down here, is basically a bar chart. We're going to do some like labels and coloring. So let's go ahead and bring that. I'm going to grab category again. So I can drop it here so that it's like a row. I can move it to the columns. So it's like that. If I want to get rid of it, I can either right click remove or I can just drag it away. That's it, right? You don't have to drop it here. You can actually drop it in here, right? You can drop it right here, right? So there's heaps of ways to do the same thing, which is fantastic, right? So we're gonna bring in categories, let's say on the rows, okay? Then I'm gonna get subcategory. And then I wanna bring those sales back in. Now, if I grab sales, I can either drop it in here, I can drop it in here, I can drop it, in. you can drop it anywhere and Tableau will just plot it, okay? So I'm gonna drop it in here so it's bar charts. And I'm gonna add a little bit of style to this. So the first thing is I want labels on these things. So what I can do is I can grab sales again and drop it right here onto label. And that's gonna put labels on it, correct? Right? It's, it's that simple, right? It's that simple. And I also wanna color this, right, based on the value. So again, I can grab those sales, I can drop it into color, right? And it's colored up from highest to lowest, right? The darker it is, the higher the value, right? And I can actually change this color. I can double click here on this legend, right? It's gonna bring this menu up, or I can click over here in color, right? I can set the opacity, right? So how see-through it is. I can set a border for it, okay? I usually don't, I want it to be nice and sleek. Um, I can go edit colors, which brings me back to the same thing as if I double clicked on this. And here I can do a few things. So let me just bring this over to the side, right? I can change the color. So let's say I want it red because I'm trying to signify these are bad things and I can go apply. So now the colors are like that. I can have a two color diverging, right? I can reverse this color. So the orange is the high number. Right, I can do one of my favorite which is red and black. So let's say sales is a good thing, right? So I really kind of want to identify the categories that aren't making sales. So I can go like this. So now I can see all these red ones. These are the most serious issues. I can reverse it because maybe this the high numbers are bad, right? And I can also do step colors, which is instead of using the full color spectrum, as you can see here, right? It just flows. I can go step color because I maybe only want two colors. I could do that as well. I mean, it's super simple. There's no programming, very little programming, right? I can go OK. And that's pretty much it. So bar charts, super simple. Um, one other thing I will adjust is see these labels. You can format these. And the way you can do that, you can do a few things, actually. Let me click on labels, right? I can click here, and I can format exactly what it says. So I can say something like sales made semicolon go apply so now it says sales made on all of them right i can format how big this is so i can make them all bold apply right go okay uh, i can change the font the styling the color bold italic i can change the alignment so i can put them all in the middle i can put them all in the beginning i can turn them well turning doesn't really do anything in this case right we're going to leave that on alignment right. So it's all the way on the right. Uh, I can also show just the minimum and maximum, right, within each kind of subgrouping, right? I can do it for the whole table. I can do it just for individual cells, which is just each individual entry, right? We're going to leave it on pane. Uh, what's the other thing? So down here, which isn't showing very well, so I'm going to just do this as a cheat. Uh, it's still not showing. Let's just do this. Still not showing. 
And I think it's because of my ratio of my computer, All right? But basically, you can just control if it's like maximum, minimum, and that's pretty much it at the bottom anyway, okay? So that's that. And then lastly, the tooltip. See how when you hover, it actually gives you some information. You can actually change that. So by clicking here on tooltip, you can again format what is in that hover, right? So I can go something like in the category, right? And then subcategory will be there, right? I can say sales were totaling, and I can put whatever this value is, okay? Full stop. I can go OK. So now when I hover it, now it says that. Sales were totaling. Right? So neat little feature. OK. Then the next thing we're going to do now is dates. OK. So that's kind of like the first part. The next part is like line charts. So pretty easy. I can click down here to do a new sheet. Right? Or I can click up here. Exactly the same thing. So I'm going to use this one at the bottom. OK. We've got a fresh sheet. Now, um, whenever you're doing like line charts, they usually represent time across the bottom, right? So I've got order date here, and you can tell really quickly if something is time by looking at the symbol, right? Now, if you got something from your data set like Excel or whatever, and it's in a date format, but in here it says like ABC, you can just click on this and change it to date, right? You can also right click here, go change data type to date. And Tableau is very, very intelligent in that if, if the format's pretty good, it can convert a lot of different format types to the correct kind of format type here, right? Which I haven't really seen done in a lot of other programs, you know? So to bring the dates over, again, you can just double click, right? And you'll notice this little plus. Right now, this plus, these are called hierarchies, and basically, it shows you the highest level. In which case, this is year. The next sub level from that, if I click this plus, is quarters. Now, as you can see, it's split it. Now, if I click that again, it's now split it into months. I can click it again. Now, it's split it by days, and you can pretty much just keep drilling down. You can eventually go down to like hours, minutes, and seconds if your data type is set to date and time. Right, and also if you have that data time, uh, if you have that data available. So let's go back to. I'm gonna go minus here, minus, and we're gonna start with just the year. And again, let's bring that sales information in here. I can just double click, right? And what's happened is it's dropped the sales value into here, right? And that's because it's just intuitively guessing it should be a text label. That's the same as me dropping it like that. But I want a bar chart, so I'm going to grab this one and drop it into rows, right? Oh, sorry, not a bar chart, a line chart. So that's dropped it in there now with labels. Now, this is only on a yearly basis, so if I click this, it's now going to show me, right, on a quarterly basis, right? But let's say I want it to be a continuous line, right? I don't want it to be, like, segmented or what's known in Tableau as discrete, right? These are discrete positions in time, whereas in a, in a um, continuous line, it's continu it's just flowing. So the way to change that is if I right click on year and I set this to continuous, it will now flow, right? You'll notice that this now covers the entire bottom. And I don't want it in year. I want a little bit more granularity. So again, you can click here. And what you'll notice is if I can get that to stay, which I can't, right? I'll just have to right click. This top section here is like discrete points, okay? This one is continuous. And it's, it's hard to kind of get your head around it if the first time you're hearing it. But let's say I go now quarter. Again, it's added granularity. If I go to month, more granularity. All the way up to, let's say, week. You can go to day. And then eventually you can go to exact date. So that's like if you have time as well, right? There's also other ones that you can do, which we're not going to get into, right? So again, it depends how much detail you want. So let's just leave it at month, right? This is represented, if I just get rid of this label, this is represented as continuous, okay? 
to show this in discrete, if we go here and go discrete, you'll notice that now it's split them up as individual points, okay, which is a little bit different and it takes up a lot more room. So now if I go year, right, and I split this, again, this is discrete, it's, it's splitting them up, okay. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, discrete and continuous does take a while uh, to really learn. So I'm going to set this back to continuous, right? We're going to go, I want it monthly, so it's not too much. Now, this is showing me the results per month, right? But what if I wanted to know the running total, right? I can simply right click on this measure, right? Which is what it's called because it's a, it's a number, and I can go quick table calculation, and I can go running total. And this is what's known as like, it's almost like an instant formula. In Excel, you kind of have to build these, but these are like, you know, already inbuilt. So if I click running total, it's a running count now. So it's adding all the preceding values. You can do this, right? Uh, you could do a number of things with these quick table calculations. You can do, Right, you can do difference, which shows how things change from one month to the next in this case. So let's go ahead and try that one. I'm going to clear the, the one before first, clear. And let's say I want to do difference. This shows me how it's changing from month to month, right? So again, su super simple to put in. Moving average is one of my favorites, right? So one thing I'm going to show you of how moving average works is let's just clear this. And what I want to do is I want to have a second line of sales, but exactly the same. So I can actually grab sales and drop another one in. Now, these two are completely identical, right? And the one on, I only want to do the moving average on one of them. So if I right click here and go quick table, moving average, right? You'll see that the line has changed. It's still the same data, but it's doing a moving average. Okay, and what a moving average does, it's sort of like a, a smoothing function, you know, a smoothing technique to get you a, a kind of easier way to read the information. So if I, let's say, change this time period to, let's say, weeks, it's very, very jagged. It's hard to know what's actually going on here, right? And so moving average is really good for smoothing that out. So if I go back into here and I go edit, right, it's going to bring me to this. And what I kind of want to do is increase the smoothing. So I want to take more values in my moving average function. So I can just click here, right? And I can increase this. And the more I increase it, the smoother my line gets, okay? So let's just say I'm going to do a two-week moving average because let's say whatever my line of work is, it kind of goes from fortnightly to fortnightly or, you know, bi-weekly. I'm going to click here. I'm going to close it, okay? Now, to show you how the moving average actually fits into the actual sales, which is up here, I'm going to show you what's called a dual axis, which is to combine the two. So you simply click on one of these measures, right? One of these, doesn't matter which. You right click and you go dual axis. And that puts them onto one chart, right? It overlays them. Now, a few things. Number one is we're going to change this color. So I'm going to click over here on measures. We're going to make the moving average red, right? And there's lots of palettes you can choose from, right? Let's say red, right? If you're lazy like me, you can just go assign palette, right? And you've already got it. So now if I click apply, it does that. Um, but I do like to set it. So let's go ahead and pick one. I want moving average to be red and sales to be gray because I want people to look at the moving average, okay? All right, so we go OK. And as you can see, the moving average is a little bit easier to see, but I want to fade out this gray part. OK, so I can go over here to the marks tile. And this is kind of where I do all my, you know, my coloring, my size. And I don't want to apply to all. I just want it on the gray one, which is this one right here. OK, so go ahead and click that. And I want to increase the opacity, right? So you can just see it. Right. The next thing I want to do is in a dual axis is you notice that these values, I mean, they're not synchronized. They're not together. So if these values are kind of based on the same data, I want them to be synchronized. So you right click here, 
you go synchronize axis. Now, as you can see, the moving average smooths the line. It gets rid of all these kind of jaggedness and gives me a good picture of how things are going. And it's telling me I'm getting these dips, right? Which from this jaggedness, you can't really see, all right? So a neat little trick, and we'll probably leave it there for dates. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the pie chart. So again, super simple to do. First thing you want to do is go over here to show me, which kind of, oh no, sorry, that's not where you want to go. First, you want to set your values. So let's say, again, we're going to bring sales into it, and we're going to split it into category. Okay, so now we got our three values, and it's simple. Uh, it's as simple as going to show me and clicking pie chart. Okay, now this is split it up in terms of values, but I mean it's not the prettiest thing. So what we're gonna do is kind of add some labels and make this a little bit prettier. First thing we're gonna do is make this fit up the whole screen, and you can use this function up here, which is standard fit width, fit height, entire view. We're gonna use entire view, right? And I want to have the labels on it. So let's bring category into the label. I want to have the actual sales on the label, right? And then I kind of want to change this font. So I'm going to click here on label, click on text. I want this one to be quite large, 14. And I want some of sales to maybe be 11. Uh, make this one bigger. Let's say 16. Apply, right? There we go. Okay. Now, one other thing that is usually common in pie chart is the sum, uh, is the percentage of the total, right? And here's how I do it. Um, easiest way I do it is if I bring sales up here into rows first, I right click and I change this to, if I go quick table calculations that we learned just before, go percent of total, right? And then I want to move it to labels. So now I've got my percentage in there. And that's usually how I do it. There probably is an easier way, but that's just how I do it. So that's pie chart. I mean, it doesn't really get more complicated than that. Uh, the most you probably want to do is change like text labels, tool tips, uh, you know, colors, that kind of thing. But we're not going to cover that. Um, next thing we're going to do is an XY scatter plot, which again is super easy. Uh, the difference in this kind of plot is that you need two measures, two sets of values, right? Because if I do like a category, and sales, right? It's gonna plot it kind of like that. But I want something that compares two measures. And the whole idea of a scatter plot is you're seeing, you're trying to determine if there is a relationship between uh, the two measures or the two variables that you're using. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. And what I wanna bring into it is sales, right? And profit, okay? And what it's done is, it's just put a single point for sales, right? And a single point for profit because it's aggregating, right? It's combining everything. But let's say I want to see it compared by category. So what I do is I drop that into color. So now this is for category. Again, doesn't really tell me much, okay? So let's add subcategory instead, all right? So this now shows me a little something. And what you'll notice is this point right here. What is going on over here? This tells me that this particular category, whatever it is, right? This one is probably, that's tables. It's making just as much as whatever this art one is, which is art, but it's actually not making a profit. So it probably tells me that whoever's selling this is, it's has a lot of expenses, okay? All right, now, there's a few things you can do with scatter plots, namely um, size and shape. Now, these functions aren't restrictive to uh, scatter plots. They can be used in all sorts of things, um, but this is kind of like the first time we're seeing it. So let's say I want to make these circles a lot bigger, right, based on their actual value. I can bring, because this vertical line is sales, right, I can bring sales drop it into size, and you'll notice the higher the sale value, the bigger the circle. And if I click this size button right here, right, it can do that. And again, this is one of those, it draws your eye kind of thing. And right now it's coloring by 
the category, I want to color it by value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this into the detail, right? And detail, it's it's called level of detail, which I'm not going to get into because it's more of an advanced kind of definition, right? But basically, it just lets you split your data into, you know, detail, right? And what I want to do is bring sales into color. And I want to change that color into, eh, what's a color I like? Let's say sunrise, sunset, okay? And go okay, right? Other thing is I want this to take up the whole room. So let's go ahead and use that entire view function again, right? And I want to make this larger. Now let's say I also want to show by category what's what. There's a few ways I can do this. I can bring category and drop it up here. So now I got three plots. I can bring it to the rows, right? But the problem with this is I've split it. So now I can't compare one to the other. So what I can do, right, is drop category into shape. Now if you can't see shape, it's because in here, right, it sometimes it sets it to automatic. So you want to set this one to shape, okay, so that this shape thing appears and drop category to shape. Now, if you notice here, all the pluses are technology, okay? All the squares are office supplies, and all the circles are furniture. And one little trick, which usually is automatic, if you click here, you can go highlight selected items, which means if I click this, it's going to show me all the circles, right? If I click that, it's going to show me the squares, that's going to be all the pluses, right? Neat little trick. And you can change the shape simply by clicking shape right you can apply all sorts of different ones i'm pretty sure you can also upload your own ones but for some reason my one doesn't have it and it hasn't for a while it had it in previous versions so i must have a bug or something okay so that's pretty much your um, scatter plots and one last thing i'll show you is trend lines okay so i'm going to get rid of these shapes right i'm just going to get rid of this thing right i just want it to be circles and we're going to go into this tab right here Okay, and this tab is analytics. Okay, and usually um, to do this kind of stuff, if you were to calculate, it would take a lot, a long time. And I'm not going to get into all of these. The only thing I'm going to get into is trend line, which is this one here, right? And if you cl click and drag this, you can do different types of trend lines. Okay, the one I usually use is polynomial from my line of work. So let's go ahead and drop it in there, and you're going to see a polynomial, right? And if you want to edit that, you can just click on it, left click, go edit, right? This can change the order of your polynomials, so the the equation itself, right? That's the only thing I really set. This stuff I don't really do anything with. Or I can go, if I just hover, I can go format. I can change this to uh, this one right here, trend lines, red. I can make it dash. I can make it thicker. Right, and I come back, and that's pretty much it, right? And the opacity has been dropped, so I'm gonna put that like that, right? So that's your XY scatter plot, pretty simple uh, thing to make use of, right? And you can kind of use it straight away. Next thing we're gonna cover is the area chart, right? Area chart super simple. Um, you can do this for I'm um, just trying to remember. Yeah, you can do this pretty much for anything. So if I bring probably uh, let me see let's bring order date in here now I'm going to show you a little trick you can click this and drop it in here and it's going to do your discrete kind of breakdowns again but I want it to be continuous right like that and here's a little trick instead of left clicking and dragging there you can use the right click button drop it in there and that brings up this menu and this menu tell lets you choose what it's supposed to be discrete continuous and this part up here is all your discretes these are all your continuous these are like counts maximum minimums and these are kind of just your standard i think they're exact dates the, these ones right so i'm interested in this one right here right so it's shown me every single point and i want to bring sales in here so it shows me sales over time now i'm going to change this from exact date to maybe uh, let's do a simpler one to month, right? And we're going to change this to an area chart. So let's click on show me and we can do 
uh, this one right here. So this is the um, continuous one. This is the discrete. So let's click on that. And that's now made it an area chart. Now I can add some color into this. So let's say I want to see, let's do it by region. I can click region and drop it into color. So now that's split it by region. But let's say I want it split. I can bring region up here. So now I have them as three. I can bring it up here, right? You can do all sorts of things. It's so simple, right? That kind of thing. And that's basically your area chart. There's really not much to it. Um, one thing I will show you that will come in handy is um, showing the distribution of these as a percentage. Because right now it's kind of like they're just stacked on top of one another. So what you can do is if you first of all duplicate this, you can either, you can just click and drag it and hold control on your keyboard, right, so that you have two sets. And on one of them, doesn't matter which, you're going to go quick table calculation and go percent of total. Okay, that's the first step. The second step is you're going to go inside and go edit. Right? And you got to change this from across to down. And what that does is, right now it's trying to grab this value and take a percentage going this way. Whoops, going this way. But the values you really need to do is going downwards, which is this one, this one, and this one. Right? So you're going down. So that's why you got to set this to down. Okay? And then you'll get this. Now what this shows me is the high, the top is a hundred percent and shows me the distribution of that. So this shows me that there's a spike here in which the red, which is south, made significantly more than the blue. You can't see that from this one on the bottom, right? So again, it's a new perspective on your data set, okay? So that is your area chart. Next thing I'm gonna show you is a bubble chart, right? And bubble charts are super fun, right? I love bubble charts. And the way you want to do it is, first of all, bring a value in it. Now, you can drop it in here, right? You can start your sales off. Let's do a category. Let's just say by region, right? And I can go into Show Me and click on Packed Bubbles. And what that's, what that's done is represented each of those values as a bubble instead of a bar chart. The bigger the bubble, the higher the value. It's as simple as that. And what you can do is you can split these bubbles like pretty... I don't know if it's a word, granularly, right? This is only splitting by region, but let's say I wanted to see it by country, right? So region, country, state, city, it gets more and more granular. Let's get rid of this color. Let's get rid of this. So now it's just a single value again. Let's bring country into detail. So now there's more values. And to create labels for this, I can drop this one, or I can duplicate this using control button, right? So those are not my countries. I can go even more detailed. I can bring state into, let's get rid of this first. I can bring state into detail. So now there's more bubbles, right? I can bring city into detail. So even more bubbles, right? And the reason this is really good is because you're kind of showing a high level view, but also able to show anomalies. So let's say I bring my sales into color, right? Just duplicating, right? And let's change it to anyone that's making heaps of sales I want to see. So let's change this to, let's say, this one and reverse it and go OK. Whoever these are, are making massive sales. And those are the ones I got to talk to, right? Let's bring some labels in here. So I'm going to bring city into labels, right? Madrid, Berlin, Vienna, Paris, London, right? So pretty cool. That is your bubble chart, right? And I'm going to show you something super cool with this later on uh, when we get to filtering. So the next thing I'm going to show you is, um, I think it's usually called like a hierarchy tree, right? Or a tree map or something like that. And basically, it just shows it, instead of circles, it kind of does squares. So I'm going to use the same data set. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this sheet. So you can right click and go duplicate, or you can click up here and click duplicate, all right, same thing. And actually, I'm gonna clear all this data so we can do it from scratch. So again, let's start with, let's do country this time. I'm gonna bring it into here. Now, one thing, when you have geographic, uh, like a geographic data set, if you double click, it does something else, okay? Which I'm gonna show you in the next one, but that's why I'm clicking and dragging instead of double clicking. Okay, so I got that. 
let's bring sales into here okay then I'm gonna go show me and I'm gonna click this one right which is the tree map and what it's done is it's representing it as square so the bigger the square the more sales they've made I'm gonna add a label here so I'm gonna duplicate this so now I can see sales right and there's a few other things you can do here right now it's coloring it by scale uh, by um, the sales value right but it's also sizing it using uh, sales but let's say I want to group them by region I can bring region in here drop it into detail right actually that's not a good way to see it I can drop it into color right so now each of the colors is a region right and the size of the square tells me how big the number is and this is again really good for pretty granular data so I can bring in the next level of data which is region region country region country the next one is state so I can drop that in here right so that's broken it down even more let's get rid of region All right let's get rid of country and let's actually go all the way to city let's drop that into here Right, so it's a lot of splits, as you can see, and these ones are the really high values. Okay, and let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. So this just looks at them individually. I want to bring region into color, so not split up by region. Okay, uh, let's bring this into detail. Oh, that didn't do anything. Uh, let's get rid of this. That's probably too granular. Let's just go uh, state. Okay, so now that's split it. And then I want to color by region. All right. I think that country just disappeared for some reason. All right, because I'm going to drop it in detail. All right. And again, you can just put your labels in. You can change your two clips. All pretty standard stuff. So this is actually one of my favorites, uh, one of my boss's favorites that he likes to use. And the very last one we're going to do is called uh, maps, which is super fun. All right. Let's open a new sheet. And when you have these geographical roles, to map them, right, all you do is double click. The only one missing from here is like postcode, but again, the whole concept is the same. So let's say I want to map all the regions on a map. I just double click, all right, and that's going to generate my map. Now, for some reason, it's not actually showing the map, which is kind of embarrassing. Let's zoom. Ah, there we go. It just takes a little while, right? And it's actually plotted each of these regions. Now, three dots, yeah, that's kind of cool, but let's do something a little bit more. So let's clear this. Let's go country. So now there's even more dots, right? I can change this from dots to, if I go show me, to areas, right? So it does groups, okay? Let's go a little bit more granular. Let's clear this. Let's go state. So again, even more dots. I can click on this. Make them individual sections. Let's go even more. Let's go city. Right? This is gonna have the oops, hang on. City. This is gonna have the most dots. Right? I'm gonna show you something super, super cool. I love this stuff. Let's say for all these cities, I want to map sales. Okay. Let's go into measures. And if you grab it and drop it on color, that's gonna order it by color, right? But again, I want to be able to see these high values. So let's go red, black, and reverse. Okay. Straight away, I can see exactly who's making the most. Yeah, you can do it on a bar chart, but you can't really, there, there's certain perspectives you're going to miss, right? But again, it depends what you're trying to do. Now, the other thing I want to do is order it by size. So if I grab sales again and drop it in size, it's done this. So anything that hasn't made a lot, a lot of money it's become a very very small dot which again makes it easier to see these high selling areas now what you're going to notice on the map is this okay when you're mapping especially if you have a lot of data this sometimes comes up and basically what it means is you may have a postcode or a city or a state it could have been spelled incorrectly or the city doesn't exist or that data isn't on google maps for example right so it, it hasn't been able to find it so if you click on this uh, unknown section you can either edit the locations and correct them or you can filter them out of your data set completely right because it does affect the scaling a little bit so if I'm gonna go filter data right and it just gets rid of it now there's a few kind of like uh, formatting things you can do here right you can change the size right until they're super big right 
like that. You can, what else you can do? You can add labels. So let's say I wanted to add the name of the city. I can copy this into a label, right? And the cool thing is um, Tableau doesn't let you overlap text, right? Which is nice. Now let's say I wanted to zoom in. I can either use this button right here to zoom in, right? And the more you zoom in, the more you'll see these kind of um, city names pop up, right? Because there's going to be less overlaps, right? Um, I can do use these tools, which is like this one's a marquee. So click on this and I can zoom into a particular area. So let's say in here, right? And it takes a little while to load because I do have quite a bit of data, right? And you can zoom in quite a bit, okay? So let's zoom in a bit more, right? You can select data and just let that load. Right, so I got my data in there. You can do other things. So let's say um, I choose this one. This one just moves the map around. So I can just do this, right? Uh, this one actually lets you select data. Now, why would this be important? Well, let me show you. So let's say you have your map, right? Let's start again. And I'm gonna do like a deep dive analysis, right? I've published this online and my boss is looking at it and he's like, oh, what are we gonna do about these dots, right? So he's gonna go in and have a look. So he's going to go here, he's going to go to the marquee tool. He's like, what's this really, really big dot? Let's see what's going on there. Okay, he zooms in. He's like, all right. That's kind of interesting. He's waiting for it to load. All right, perfect time for me to have a sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. all right, and it goes in a little bit further. All right. And again, it takes a little while to load because um, I've got so many cities on the map, right? And he's like, okay, something's happening here, right? So let's, he wants to see what data is actually in here. So he can go into this tool right here, right? And do a square, right? Or he can select them using this radial selection. You just click in the middle and you zoom out. And as you can see, it actually tells you the scale. This kilometers thing, it doesn't always appear if you're really zoomed out, right? Like, and you're looking at lots of countries. And the reason for that is because when you're that, that high, right, in terms of viewpoint, think of it as altitude, how high you are, pretend you're in space. Um, this circle isn't accurate anymore because of the shape of the Earth, <laughs> right? So the curvature of the Earth and all that kind of stuff. So uh, just a little fun fact, right? So let's say I'm going to select all these. Right? You can do that with the radio button, or you can use what's called the lasso. Right, And the lasso is super fun. You just draw a lasso, basically. Right Now what happens is this little menu pops up, and that pops up when you just leave your mouse over something you've selected. And there's a few things you can do. Keep only means, uh, I'll show you that when I zoom out, actually. The one you really want to look at is this last one right here. And if you click on that, it's going to open this window and it's going to show you what this information is in table form. So let's go ahead and maximize that. It's going to show me all the cities in the area that I've selected, the country, etc. Now I can look at a little bit more, right, in terms of detail. I can click on this uh, tab at the bottom that says full data. And that's going to give me a little bit more of a view. And usually this show all fields isn't selected. This uh, these are the fields used to create that plot you saw, right? But this time it shows me each individual record, right? Let's say I wanted to see even more data, which is my entire data set. I can click show all fields. So this is really good because if you're a senior manager, you may not need the full data set. You may just need the summary. If you're a analyst or like mid-level manager, maybe you need a little bit more detail. If you're a programmer, or analyst, or, you know, someone on the ground, you need to see the detail. So by getting this view, you can do a lot more. And let's say you wanted to download this. You just click the export all button, right? And you can save it as a CSV file. You can do this on Tableau online as well. Once your dashboard has been published, right? You don't need just the, the desktop edition, right? So let's go ahead and close that, uh, right? And I'm going to show you that keep only thing. All right, I'm going to click on this button to reset the map. So I'm back out again. So let's grab the lasso. Let's say I'm only interested in this section right here. I can actually do a lasso like this, okay? And I don't wanna see the rest of this data because these big red 
um, values are actually affecting these results. I just want to see this area. So if I hover and I go keep only, it only shows me that area. It actually filters all these out, right? And you know it's been filtered because if you now look into this filters tile, which we'll cover, you'll see that this filter has now been generated, right? So now this rescales and you go, all right, I'm only interested here, right? So you go keep only again. And the other cool feature is if I highlight this area, it actually tells me what the sum of sales are, how many items I've selected, right? And you can do the opposite of keep only, which is exclude. So let's say I don't want to see this. I can go exclude. And then again, it focuses just on that top section, right? So pretty cool. Let's say if I want to go back, right? That means I have to get rid of these um, filters. So I just click these, drag them out, right? That brings me back. Now, last thing is I'm going to show you some formatting. So if I click on format, uh, no, not format, map, and I go map layers, right? It's going to bring me to this menu. There's a few things you can do here. Style, you can change it to normal. And it gives you a nice blue ocean, right? Uh, the rest of the world is missing ocean for some reason. I think the internet's just slow tonight because this all works, I think, off the internet. You can change this to dark, right? So it makes everything black. This one I actually really like personally, but a lot of people at work don't really like it. Um, I'm not too sure why. Uh, you can, let's go back to normal. All right, you can change the washout, and the washout, what that does is it doesn't change the color of your points, just the background, right? It It's kind of good in a way because it makes your data stand out a bit more. Uh, repeat background, I'm not going to get into You don't need that. Coastline, I like to put in just to show where the coastline is, right? So now there's like a line on the coast. And all this other stuff, you you can add these, right? And these become available once you've zoomed into an area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the radial plot. And let's go into this area here. Just a really small area. And I want to go keep only. Right. Again, a really small area. Keep only. Okay. So now we're in Paris. All right. So let's just let that load for a second. Good time for me to have a stretch. This is like the longest video I've ever done. Mm. Oh. Okay, now, what you'll notice on the left is these options are now available. So if I zoom in just a little bit more, right, let that load for a second. Okay, come on. All right, so we've got these areas now. If I click on streets and highways, it will actually show me the streets and highways, which is pretty sick. All right? So now I can see all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get rid of these labels, actually. I'm, it might be what's slowing it down. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of colors. Right? Um, I can add country borders, border names, region names. Right? Let, actually, in fact, let's just turn all this on so you can kind of see what the most you can actually get from this. Basically, it shows you like postcodes, suburb, regions, that kind of thing. Uh, it gives them labels in the back. This is really good for um, some of the uh, people I work with who need to decide where to navigate or how to get from one place to another, depending on what areas they need to visit. Right? Thing is, though, the more you add, the more rendering time, the more performance uh, you kind of need. Uh, when you publish online, it does take a little bit more power. So just keep that in mind. As you can see, it's taking a water kind of render. So let's zoom out a little bit. All right. So I'm actually thinking that's the last of our um, like graph creations, right? So the next thing we're really going to cover is like filters and dashboards, and then formatting, and then we'll finish off with like some Tableau Online stuff, right? And actually, about 45 minutes ago, one of my videos got published. Okay. Now, for some reason, that's frozen because I have put so much stuff on it. So let's actually go ahead and go back to Jellyman and see if my video actually went out while that other thing loads. Man, I love this artwork. You know all these artworks? These were all done using Tableau. <laughs> like, I just got data sets and now I was, um, oh, what happened here? All right. Something's wrong with the internet.
I think maybe it's because I'm overloading this thing. All right, I'm probably going to pause it now. And just wait till this thing gets fixed. All right, so I'll tune in in like one second. Okay, back again. So unfortunately, Tableau did crash on me because I just tried to make it do too much stuff. So uh, I lost a lot of that kind of graphic stuff, but that's okay because the next thing we're doing is going to be super basic and not really dependent on that old stuff. So what I'm going to do is create um, two things, right? We're, we're going to start doing a dashboard now, but I'm going to introduce you to filters. So let's bring in category. Right. Actually, let's bring that into rows. Let's bring in subcategory as well. And I want to bring in sales. Okay. Let's bring in sales. And let's add a label to this. And let's add some color as well. So pretty easy. I mean, this used to take ages to do. Uh, let's go entire view. And actually, I'm going to show you one little thing. I want to see profit as well. So let's drop profit next to that. So now I've got two charts. So neat little feature. Okay. I'm just going to resize this a little bit. Just so this top one fits. All right, that's not gonna fit. It's one word. Okay, so that's that one. And let's just call this sales and profit, right? And the way you edit that is you can just double click or you can right click and go rename, right? And then what I'm gonna do is this. This is all regions, okay? So I want to bring a filter so that it can only see a certain region. So let's bring f region into filters. And that's going to go, well, which ones do you want to see, All right? So I'm going to say I just want to see central and north and go OK. Well, let's go apply first so you can see what it does. Notice how the values change. Then I'm going to go OK, right? Now, the annoying thing about filters is I always have to go in here and edit it, right? I can right-click edit or I can double-click this. So what you can do is you can right-click on this filter and go show filter. And what it's done is it's added this filter to the right side. Right, which now means I can edit it from here. So pretty cool, right? Let's do another uh, sheet. Okay, so let's do a new sheet, and this time I want to do. Um, let's just do. Let's do order date, right? I want to continue a line, and I want to see the sales over time. Okay, uh, let's change this to month, right? And let's just add some labels here. Ah, no, actually, let's just get rid of that. That's pretty much fine for me. So let's just say, say this is sales over time, All right? And actually, I'm going to add profit again, right? Just so we have the two lines. And I kind of want to change the color. So let's go sales. Let's make one. Oh, let's make sales green and the other one blue, right? So now. It, we want to create what's called a dashboard, right? So a dashboard is sort of like, a, it's a collection of your sheets, but also it adds some interactivity to what you're doing, right? So what you do is you just click on this button right here, right, which is new dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different. And the sheets that you we've just created, which are these two right here, are now available over here. And all you do is you drag, and you drop, okay? Drag, and you drop, okay? And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, so I can go into here and just adjust the height, just so it fits into my computer screen. I'm usually in a, a lot higher resolution, but for this training video, I just reduced it, right? And then we can increase this a little bit, right? Now, you can adjust this as many times as you want. You can put this one underneath, right? You can put it on the left side, right? Heaps of things you can do. Let's bring this over here, right? And there's a few filtering options you can have. Now, you remember this um, filter we have for the region. This is only applied to this one. So how do I make it so that this applies to both of them, right? Well, what you do is you click on this triangle. You click on Apply to Worksheets, and you go Selected Worksheets. You click the worksheets that you want it to apply to, so now it applies to both, and you go OK. So now, if I click on north, they both change, right, if I do that. Now, there's a few things you can do with this filtering type. I can right-click on it, and these are the filtering types you can, have, you can have. So let's say I do single value list. They change them into radio buttons, right, so it's a little bit easier. I can see all, I can see all of them like that. I can go single value drop-down, 
which is good for when you have a lot of filters. You can reduce a lot of the space usage, right? You can do it like that, right? I can go again to single value slider, which you can kind of scroll like this. I can go to multi -value, uh, multiple value list, which we had before. The only thing that's annoying about this is, let's say I had 10 of these and I wanted to select like three. Um, that means each time I click it, it does the rendering. And if you have a lot of data, that tends to be annoying. So what you can do is you can right click and go customize and just add the apply button, right? And what that does is you make your selection first, then you hit apply. So it's a, it's a lot better performance wise. All right, next thing is, um, similar to that drop down, I can do this drop down, which again shows this one. My only problem with this is if you if you had multiple values selected, in here it says multiple values, and the problem with that is if I print this or I email it, you don't know what's been selected. So just you know, it's not that great in that sense, right? So just be cautious of that. Multiple values custom list, right? So here I believe you can set them or something. I don't really use that one. Wildcard match, I'm not going to cover. Uh, I won't cover the rest of this stuff, right? Now, there's another thing you can do. I'm just going to swap this around, actually, right? I want to get rid of this scale. I don't really need it. Um, and that's using one filter to filter the other thing, right? If I want to be able to click on this thing and see what its sales and profit is over time, okay? And the way you do that is... You simply activate this sheet and you click this button right here, Users Filter. So now if I click Bookcases, it shows me sales and profit for bookcase, chairs, art. I can do multiple ones, right? I can say, well, let me just show, let me just see these high, high ones, right? What's going on there? I can say, show me these three low ones. So again, super interactive, very, very simple to use, right? And you can add as many filters as you want. So if I go back to this sheet, right? Let's go here, go to sheet. I can add, you know, category to filters. Go okay. I can add subcategory. Okay. And if I go back to the dashboard, to add those filters, I go analysis, filters, and I can add as many as I want. So I want to add category. I want to add subcategory. And again, I can do the, the same things. So let's switch this back to single value. And one thing I actually will show you is what's called, um, well, I don't know what's called, but basically these options, only relevant values and all values, right? Or all values in the database. And what happens is in a particular region, you may not have each of these existing. So you can actually go only relevant values so that if let's say I click bookcases, right? Well, actually no. Um, let's say I'm going to do the apply button here. Let's say I just want to see furniture. See how this one changes? It only shows me options for furniture rather than showing me everything. You know, If I want to see just office supplies, just show me office supplies. Again, these filters still apply, right? So this is a really good tool because you can have heaps of different filters. And usually what I do is I try and keep my uh, visualizations kind of, they're kind of directed but they're general as well because a lot of people use my dashboards and they use them for all sorts of different things if I make it too restrictive to one thing like it does is just a single thing it's only going to service like one person or, or two or two people so by making it a little bit more general and having a lot more filters and controls like 20 different people can use it for 20 different things from senior managers down to analysts right so uh, that's kind of like a practice thing all right, so that's your dashboards created. One thing I will show is your dashboard title, right? Just click this button right here. Double click this and you go, my very first dashy, right? And go okay, right? The last thing I'm gonna show you is actually publishing online, which will complete our journey. And the whole idea is when you use Excel or you know any other kind of tool like that, um, you're preparing your data, it ends up in an Excel spreadsheet, gets saved on a network somewhere or on the cloud or whatever, and then it gets emailed out. And if you're emailing to a lot of people and you're emailing all the time, it's hard to know what the latest version is or the data itself isn't as, it's not as easily controlled, it's not as easily manipulated because not everyone is awesome at Excel. Some people are super 
like fantastic they're mavericks some people really suck and some people are mavericks who actually suck and some people suck who are actually mavericks right i can go all day but basically you you want like one place where they where your users go right if i have 10 people that this is going to go to and i send 10 screen uh, i send a screenshot of this to 10 people they're going to be arguing oh, well which one's the latest data if i sent this every single day this last week right so you want a, a place where they all go and they refer to the same data and we can get on with our work right and that's where tableau online comes in so let me draw you a quick kind of representation of what tableau online is so pretend this is uh, pretend this is me right so this is jed right and i've just built my dashboard then you have the cloud okay or tableau online right and my drawing tool is kind of a bit delayed so tableau online right i create my dashboards like we've seen in this last hour and i publish it online okay uh -huh. Right. Then I've got all my users who have Tableau Online licenses. Right. Let's see. And instead of going direct to me, they log in to the cloud. And no matter what, everything that is on the cloud is for us considered that is the most relevant and up to date information. It's only in one place. Right. And that also means they can have access to everything because if if we have multiple developers which we do right everything is one in one centralized location right so everyone is feeding the cloud and everyone is accessing the cloud we don't really send excel spreadsheets to each other and say this is the final stats right we, we really try and work off the cloud and there's a lot less confusion collaborations a lot better so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to publish it's it's super simple right i'm not going to go into how to create a site or anything like that it's pretty self-explanatory um, if you're like the first user of tableau in your corporation your business whatever it might be um, you're gonna have to do that part otherwise your it division will do it um, if you have tableau server that kind of thing but it, it's, it's it's not rocket science right um, i've done rocket science it's not rocket science so if you go server and you go publish right it's going to ask you to connect to your server again if you haven't got a site just follow the prompts right here okay because uh, since the advent of tableau creator license which couples tableau online tableau desktop and tableau prep together right if you have a tableau desktop license you can create a site so that's no problem at all not like it used to be so you go ahead and go create a site that will link to your tableau account right and then you have a site in our case we already have one so i just click connect all right that's going to go pitch, 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 and compile all that stuff for me um when you first build your dashboard like the very first one uh the publication process does does take a little while um and by a little while i'm talking like a few minutes like i'm not talking like an hour um after the first one it's pretty quick all right and also it's i don't know why but the internet's quite slow tonight all right so i'm gonna just log into my account all right and sign in all right and the tableau um cloud it's, it's very very secure so they actually have a website which shows like all the maintenance they do um, it's part of their tableau website itself but um it shows them when there's any shortages, any security breaches, and I, there never has been one, to my knowledge. Um, I usually keep pretty close tabs on that kind of stuff, so it's pretty, it's very secure. And I think they have a few, I think two or three um, server sites that you can publish to. All right. Okay. So this is still thinking, it's still compiling. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a little stretch, but we are coming to an end. Okay. Let me just check my list. Uh, my throat is parched. I need a beer. Okay, here we go. It's coming together. Right. So again, just takes a little while in the first go. Right. Now, when you hit publish, it's going to come up with this menu, right? And this basically asks you, well, where do you want to publish to? So think of Tableau Online as like, you know, um, a, a, uh, a supermarket. You know how you have aisles and everything. If you just chuck everything anywhere, 
well, no one's going to be able to find anything. So you, you of course, want folders where certain things go. Maybe you do it by division. Maybe you do it by project, whatever it might be. So this first one, uh, these are the projects that you create once you log into Tableau Online, which I'll show you in a second. But you just select where you want to save it, what you want to call it. In this case, I've had one from a previous uh, tutorial I did. And I'm going to go ahead and ignore tags. I'm going to go into Sheets. This just says what you want to publish, right, in terms of your sets here. I'm only interested in publish, publishing the dashboard because that contains all the sheets already anyway. So I'm just going to deselect these, right, permission, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then in the more options, you want to tick this thing, right, so that you'll see later. Then I'm going to go publish. Now, if I've got a dashboard in there that's from a, that's already exists, I want to override it. Okay, that's going to do its thing. It's going to compile and publish. And when it's done, it's going to open a browser automatically for me, and it's going to show that okay, your publish publishing is done. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's just check the channel. Refresh that. Yeah, got all these ones about to be released soon. There's going to be a lot of videos on this channel. All right, and then it's going to say it's published. So now I'm in the Tableau Online environment. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this. Now let's go back one step. Let's close this. To get the Tableau Online, you simply just go Tableau Online login, right? Click on this one. It's going to take you to a sign on page. For my one, it might not if I'm already logged in, right? But basically, oh, well, there you go. Sign in. I could really go from crispy pork belly right now, right? And then I'm going to go to where it was published, which is, if I go back here. I'm just gonna go to the explore view. Your one may look different. I'm in I'm actually in the beta testing group for one of their new views, right? So mine looks a little bit different, but it's it's pretty basic. Just think of them as like folders, right? And the place I published to was in here. Right. Right. And you're gonna see where's a superstore in my very first dashi. Right. So click that. Right. So this is now available for every Tableau online user in my who has access to this to view this data. So go ahead and open that. All right. And now as you can see, this is the dashboard we created. I'm going to go full screen mode. Right. And again, I can use this as was designed. All right. Pretty cool. All right. Now there's a few things you can do here. I'm going to show you the subscribe, share, and comments uh, features. And then I think we're going to call it a night. So if we go comments, in comments, you got some uh, two really cool features. First is uh, mentions. So if I press the at symbol, right, and I go, let's say, myself, right, but obviously you're not going to notify yourself. You notify someone else, right? You go like that and go, hey, check out my dashboard. Right, and I go enter. Basically, I'm going to get a notification saying, Hey, someone made a comment, referred to you to look at something. Right, in that email, when I click it, it takes me straight here. The second feature is if I have some filter set, so let's say I was doing a study, I looked at furniture, right, in the central region, and I wanted to look at just bookcases, right. And I go, oh, this is really interesting. We have a problem here. I got to tell someone. If you click this button, it takes a snapshot of all the filters you applied. So when you go post and the person gets the email, when they click on it, it will apply the exact same filters you had on, right? So you're talking about the same thing. Collaboration is a lot easier. So I don't want to do this. I'm just going to clear this out. All right. So that's the comments feature. Let's close that. The next thing is share. So sharing is pretty kind of standard these days. You can either embed the code somewhere right on a website or whatever it might be or you can uh, share the link itself to someone else to say you know 
come check out this particular page. So pretty simple. And subscribe. Subscribe is like a um, it's like a notification at a certain time of the day or week. So let's say in my line of work, I do um, I run like some systems in the morning, and then I want it that eleven o'clock every single day. All my users, right, who who depend on this data, are going to get an email saying the data has been refreshed. Press this link to check it out, right? And the way you do it is you can add users. You just type in their name. So let's say Jed, right? I add myself in there. Um, you can add it by group if you've created a group of people. You can say the whole workbook or just this view. Right? You can set the schedule. So in this case, it's daily. You can do it weekly, monthly, whatever. Um, every day, set the time in which you're going to receive it, and then what days you want to receive it. Okay, go done. Um, subject is just the subject line in the email. You can add a message as well if you want to. And that's pretty much it. And this subscribe me is asked because you can actually subscribe other people to this dashboard. So let's say I just built this new one. I want like a specific five people to see this. I'll sub subscribe them for them rather than them having to do it for themselves, right? Whew. And I think that is it. Oh, that was a long training video. But I really hope you enjoyed. I hope this took you from zero to you know being able to be on your own um this is just scratching the surface of what tableau can do man there's so many things we didn't cover which is like you know uh calculations we're talking about like a deep dive analysis a lot of the features of the dashboards we didn't cover story mode but again those are kind of like add-on effects and i will have videos on those things but this was more to just take you from zero to being able to create a few bar charts, a few line charts, um, nothing too extravagant. Uh, extravagant? Is that the right word? Nothing too fancy or sophisticated. Um, basic dashboard and some stuff online. And this is usually how I start people off uh, when I'm training them or I'm training teams up or we're doing our first set of consultations. I, I try and start it off really, really basic. And then all the really, really fancy stuff we, we can do later on because there's just so much you can do in Tableau right? So I really hope you enjoyed this training. Uh, please tune in. I will have heaps of stuff coming in. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe because I will have lots of stuff. And I will see you next time, fellow Tableau user. Bye!